Hello everyone, welcome to this conference session on doing statistics in Julia. I am going to do an introductory talk on some of the big ideas. Then after that, you're going to get a bunch of specific talks on individual packages and uh, problem areas. And then finally, we're going to go into a panel discussion with some of the cool people who are building things in this field. Okay, so let's get started. For me, the point of departure is, of course, R. Most people in the world of statistics tend to use R. And uh, it's important for us to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the R world. The first thing to emphasize is that the strength of the R packages is simply remarkable. There's been thousands of people who have built extremely high quality packages in R. And there's a lot to be said for the intellectual capacity and the high software quality that has gone into the R package ecosystem. Now, from the viewpoint of a statistics user, there are many things about the syntax of R which come quite naturally, which come quite readily, particularly if you want to write 5-10 lines. It's a domain-specific language which is meticulously convenient for the people in the space of data science, for the people in the space of statistics. But that has come at a price. And some of the clean computer science principles of simplicity, consistency, have been sacrificed in return for that ease of uh, extremely nice 510 line script. And I think that these trade-offs have started showing, particularly now that we are doing really enormously complex things using R. So I think that there is modern computer science knowledge about what is a simple, clean, consistent programming language. And the trade-off that R achieved was an approachability and the ease of access for the world of statistics in return for sacrificing some of the simplicity and consistency in the world of computer science. The next thing I want to point out is that the world of R programming has actually split into two somewhat different kinds of languages. There are the R programs written by old timers like me, and then there is the Hadleyverse, the Tidyverse, which is actually in many ways a very different language. Many times it seems like the two groups can barely read each other's code. So the R world is not as monolithic as it seems. Yes, of course, we can call each other's packages, but the ability to read the other person's program has diminished. I'm reminded of a joke about Perl that it's a write-only language. If you read your own code of a few years ago, you can't remember what the hell you were thinking. I know I have been in that place myself. And then we get to the problem of performance. In the last 10, 15 years, data set sizes have simply exploded and uh, it is difficult to achieve high performance in R owing to some basic language design features that will not be readily eliminated without breaking compatibility with the language. So as a consequence, many researchers, many applications in the industry end up having to put in extra effort to overcome performance bottlenecks. There are broadly <coughs> two approaches for doing this. Either we go more intensively into parallel computation or we write something using RCPP or we're linking into ancient Fortran codes and that of course comes at a cost. So this is not free. It, the most important resource is not the CPU but the human mind and the kind of effort many people are taking when confronted with these performance gaps is quite immense. My last idea in this is of course the familiar Julia argument about the two language problem, particularly when there is a separation between a research stage and a deployment stage. It tends to often be the case that there is the step of studying the data and arriving at certain models which is done in R and then something is rewritten in C or Fortran or something else to be suitable to a real world enterprise deployment and that is painful and expensive. So I think that there's a two language problem at two levels. Many R packages contain a great deal of C and Fortran and then 
there is the deployment problem where enterprise <laughs> IT applications tend to demand converting from an experimental or a research code in R into a production code into something else. So this is my sense of what is happening in the R landscape. Well, what are the possibilities with Julia and how does it shape our thinking for the field of statistics? My sense is that 10, 15 years of progress in programming language design and software engineering has gone into Julia. I feel the syntax is clean. It is simple. It is elegant. It is consistent, particularly when you go beyond 10 lines, 50 lines to 500 lines. The differences are palpable and it's just a cleaner place to be building stuff. So I feel that the productivity of the programmer has gone up considerably thanks to the 10, 15 years of progress and the simplicity of the language. I think Julia has been more careful about laying down the clean lines of modern programming language design. And then there are the performance gains. Everybody talks about how Julia is better. Um, I want to tell a story about our own experience. You're going to see the talk about uh, the survey package that uh, my colleagues have built. And in the survey package, we have seen that while we have enormous respect and admiration for the work that Thomas Lumley and others did in building the survey package. We find that our small Julia implementation of similar concepts for certain similar problems is giving performance gains like a hundred times. hundred times is a lot and it matters materially for the kind of projects that we are doing. And then exactly as I said a moment ago, if the person doing the applied statistics is investing time in going poly language or in doing a lot of work on parallel computation or in the separation between research and deployment, then some of these problems are eased because in Julia we get to go with a one language and the same language can go all the way to a production deployment. So I think this is the case for Julia that there is value added from the simplicity, the elegance, the consistency of a modern programming language and a supporting modern software engineering environment. In my opinion, the single place where the greatest translation of this promise of Julia into a living reality has taken place lies in Bayesian computation. In the world of Bayesian computation, we've gone through a long journey of bugs and then JAGS and then STAN. And in its own way, we have had this two language problem all through. So, you know, we are uh, finding ourselves in the place of writing an R program inside which there is a STAN program. And that is its own kind of two language problem. And uh, there was a natural opportunity to make an all Julia workflow because Julia has the modern computer science through which the Bayesian model can be written in pure Julia. And there could have been an approach of doing something more modest, but I really admire the people who have done Turing, who have done Sauce, and they've played this at a higher level. They've played this at a bigger scale. And I feel it's not an exaggeration today to say that the best Bayesian statistics today in the whole world is done in Julia using Turing and Sauce. And I think these are remarkable packages and they have not done a mere re-implementation of Stan in Julia, but they've gone and thought this afresh using the modern computer science opportunities of Julia. And in my mind, this is a foretaste of where we can go in statistics in Julia. So we're not there. There are many pieces that need to be done, but in my mind, this is a demo of what a transformative gain can be obtained by rethinking statistics from the ground up using Julia. And that takes us to the perennial debate that when we build statistics for Julia, should we go for something that is more comprehensible for the install base that is coming from R? Okay, the bulk of the statistics of the world today is done in R. And so there are certain metaphors, there are certain interfaces that a lot of the user base is used to. Or should we go deep into a native Julia world of rethinking, of reimagining how these things can be done in the Julia world? And while of course there will be this perennial debate, in my opinion, I feel we should lay the foundations for a more profound gain as the Turing and Sauce people did. And so I feel that maybe there should be a compatibility layer, there should be uh, code generators like the old F2C. There should be many, many crutches using which the install base can choose to move 
more readily. But fundamentally, a programming language that does not change the way you think about programming is not worth learning, as the old fortune goes. And here, I think our opportunity is to rethink this as a, at a deeper level. So just like S was a revolution, just like R has been a revolution, I feel there is an opportunity here to think about statistics from the ground up in a new way to bring new imagination to bear on this and to build a new world which will actually be more expressive and come closer to our thinking as statisticians and make it easier and nicer for us to do statistical research. So we're not competing with anybody else in this game, we're competing with ourselves. Let's build something good. Now in this, I think it's important to see that we don't need to leave the richness of our R packages behind. R call is always there and so we are never stranded. So in fact, whenever there is a particular specialized estimator, which is done very well by an R package, great, we should use it. So as an example, I have worked on an R package called FX regime, which estimates structural breaks in the exchange rate regime. It is perfectly accessible using R call. So I feel that our way forward lies first in focusing on the 90% of the lines of a project, which are actually the everything else. Only 10% of the lines of a project are the actual statistical estimation. So our focus should be on the foundations, the data structures, the expressivity of the syntax, how we hook up to databases, how we connect into maps, the whole complexity of handling data, managing data, manipulating data, which actually eats up 90% of our time and effort and lines of code. These are the key choke points. Once these are done well, we are ready to move projects into Julia and I hope the Julia statistics world already adds value when compared with some of the difficulties of our R world. And when it comes to the specialized estimator, we can always use R call and drop into a beautiful R package and get our estimation done. So I feel our priority in building the Julia statistics ecosystem should be the everything else. It should be data structures, syntax, expressivity, and the surrounding infrastructure of databases and maps and parallel computation and so on. So here's an example from our life. Um, we love data frames, what the pioneers in Julia and Bogumil have done in data frames is wonderful. And uh, in the field of time series, we feel that there is remarkable capability in the R world, first in terms of the uh, zoo package and then in terms of the XTS package. They have built a whole set of metaphors and convenient expressions through which the finance, macro, and a whole array of other subjects are able to do time series analysis. So we built a Julia package that is called TSX, which borrows a lot of these metaphors and implements them using data frames. So it turns out that all the functions that we have built in TSX are just one or at most two lines of data frames. But the point is that they pick up the world of a time series programmer to a higher level and so that we're not doing complex data frames manipulations, but we get the simplicity and the beauty of the zoo and XTS syntax so that basically you could be doing a complex time series oriented finance macro project in a Julia workflow. And then of course, there will be times when you're doing a complex uh, estimation of some likelihood function. At that time, it may well make sense for a long time to drop into an R package to get your estimation done. But the viability of the main microfinance workflow being done in Julia critically required this replacement for a Zoo XTS and so we chose to build that in the TSX package. So what is our strategy going forward? Our strategy is that we are doing many interesting academic and other applied research projects in Julia. We are building applied statistics projects entirely in Julia. Every now and then we encounter an important bottleneck and then we try to go and solve it. And we don't stop at half measures. We do the full software engineering. We build test cases. We write documentation. We fit it into the existing Julia package ecosystem. But our main driver is that 
we are researchers and we are doing applied statistics papers. With each of our papers, we are releasing the complete reproducible research code so that other people can see complete paper implementations being done in Julia. And that may help many other people think about this and you know, hopefully build better stuff based on what we are doing. So far, we have a complete release of one paper. The uh, title and the URL are on the screen where there is a working paper and the complete Julia code. And by the way, an underlying Julia package so that we've released everything and a, one complete implementation has been done in Julia. So this is going to be our strategy going forward that one by one, we are engaged in moving our applied statistics workflow into Julia and solving many of the bottlenecks that come along along the way. So to give you a flavor of who we are and what we have been doing, uh, there are names of key persons on this slide and I want to uh, give a shout out and credit to many, many students who have been part of this work. It's great, the kind of team that has come together, the momentum that has built up around this development. And I just want to introduce some of the packages. Uh, CR Rao is our attempt at a single consistent API for a wide variety of statistical models. Uh, Nighttime Lights is the package for cleaning and bias correcting nighttime lights satellite imagery. Survey.jl is a package for working with complex survey data. TSX is a time series class that will be particularly useful for finance and macroeconomics, but also in any other area where there is regular or irregular time series data. And we've also done a bunch of smaller things. We've contributed improvements to the GLM package. We've built a LOS. We've built a Merton KMV model with a distance to default. So uh, thank you for having been in this uh, talk uh, so far. Uh, our URLs are on the screen. We'd love to have your interest and involvement in carrying this work forward. And as I said, in this conference session, we now deep dive into many of these things and we're going to come out at the other end with a more strategic panel discussion about Julia and statistics and what works and what doesn't work and what we can do better. Thank you. <laughs>